Good afternoon. And on behalf of the National Black Catholic Congress, welcome to the webinar, Understanding the Daniel Rudd Fund Application Process. My name is Pearl S. Springer, and I am the coordinator of Black Catholic Ministry for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis in Indiana. I received a Daniel Rudd Fund grant in 2019. The program that received the grant focused on African and African-American Catholic youth and young adults through outreach with the goal of creating a network of people who fully participate in the church. Through ongoing engagement with the youth and young adults, we believe that they would be more supportive of their pastors, their families, and their communities. And this connection with the church may lead to an increase in vocation to consecrated life. If your program needs a little help as you begin implementation or move to a different phase, I encourage you to consider completing a Daniel Rudd Fund grant application. I found that the fund provided just what was needed to launch our ministry to engage Black Catholic youth and young adults on a deeper level. Today's webinar is geared to returning and new applicants who want insight into the grant process or have questions before they begin. Father Stephen Thorne, a special consultant to the National Black Catholic Congress is presenting today's webinar. He was one of the founders of the Daniel Rudd Fund grant program, as well as its original grant administrator. Father Thorne is a priest of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia who has served in parish ministry, administration, and education for over 20 years. He has earned academic degrees in philosophy, theology, and education. From 2004 to 2011, Father Thorne was the director of the Office for Black Catholics for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. He is a consultant for the Subcommittee for African-American Catholics for the United States Conference for Catholic Bishops and has participated in all of the National Black Congresses since 1987. Presently, he's a doctor student at Bowie State University and chairs the Archbishop's Commission for Racial Healing for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Father Thorne will go through the application process, identify areas that the reviewers take special note of, and answer your questions. I will now turn the presentation over to Father Thorne. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Perlette, for sharing um, your witness, your testimony of the Daniel Rudd Fund, and um, a few words about me. Uh, but most importantly, when I hear an introduction like that, I, I think to myself, what's most important about me and what's most important about everyone who's with us today is that I am and you are a child of God. And so titles and all those things are nice, but most importantly, God woke me up this morning and I'm glad to be in the service just one more time. So thank you, Ms. Perlet. She's gonna be a doctoral student herself and get her doctorate. So we offer her congratulations and all the work she's doing in Indianapolis. Also, a tremendous word of gratitude to Ms. Valerie Washington, Ms. Kimberly Hefner from the National Black Catholic Congress office. They are behind the scenes doing great work. So we're very grateful for their presence here today. Thank you for giving up your time, whether you're on the East Coast or the West Coast or in the South or North, wherever you are in our great nation, thank you for being with us today. I hope you are, um, hope you're, you're safe and well uh, in the midst of this, uh, this time of COVID-19, which is still a reality today. Uh, this tremendous heat that many of us are enduring right now. I uh, hope you are cool. As we, as we pray uh, in a few moments of uh, this prayer for vocations, we're mindful of those uh, who have suffered so greatly in Florida, our brothers and sisters in that terrible building collapse. We're mindful of those who are suffering in mind and soul and body. We're mindful of those who are suffering from the terrible gun violence that we see in many of our cities throughout our country. With all of our thoughts and prayers, let us be in peace right now. And let God bless this assembly and let God have God's way. And let us pray and ask God to bless our webinar today. 
I invite you to pray with me, wherever you are, this prayer for vocations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, stir within us the passion to promote vocations to the consecrated life, society's apostolic life, Dawson priesthood, and permadiaconate. Inspire us daily to respond to your call with boundless compassion, abundant generosity, and radical availability. Help us remember our own baptismal call to rouse us to invite the next generation to hear and to respond to your call. Inspire parents, family, lay ecclesial ministers to begin a conversation with young Catholics to consider how they will live their lives of holiness and sacred service. Nudge inquirers and motivate discerners to learn more about the monastic life, apostolic life, missionaries, cloistered contemplative life, and evangelical Franciscan life. Ignite our church with a confident humility. There is, there is an urgent need for religious sisters, brothers, deacons, and priests to live in solidarity with those who are poor, neglected, and marginalized. Disrupt our comfortable lives with a complacent attitude, with new ideas to respond generously and creatively with a daily yes. Let the church say, amen, amen. Once again, thank you for being here today. I'm so excited to present this webinar today. Before we get started today, it's a few general notes. Uh, we thank God for the gift of these platforms called Zoom, able to connect us together safely. Uh, I often say that God is not a virtual God. God's a close God. God comes in the sun, in the flesh, but we thank God for the ability to be together virtually. That being said, uh, some general notes about our time together for the next hour. Uh, I can, we can see there are many of you uh, together. There are over 40 of you here right now and, and more to come. Uh, you cannot see each other, but you're, we know you're present. And we're here. We welcome you all here today. Uh, please chat with us, the chat box, uh, and select panelists and attendees for a group chat. Um, if you want to say, uh, say, share something with us or offer a question with us, I'll try to answer those questions at the end of our presentation. This presentation is being recorded and we'll share within a few days uh, from the Congress office. And there'll also be a brief survey we want you to answer about how the, um, the webinar went and what could, we, could be improved in the future. All right, great. A little bit about uh, Daniel Rudd. This may be old news to some, uh, but for those who don't know who Daniel Rudd, uh, what he was, who he was, uh, first of all, he's an outstanding uh, Catholic layman, a journalist and a lay leader in our church. He was known for starting in 1885, Think about the historical context of that. What was known as the first newspaper printed by and for African-Americans, the Ohio Tribune, which later expanded to become the American Catholic Tribune. And most especially, uh, Daniel Rubb was a faithful Catholic and was one of the founders of what we know now as the National Black Catholic Congress way back in the 1800s. And they had their first meeting right there at the Great St. Augustine's Church in Washington, D.C in 1889. We're very grateful for his service. And we can't forget that Congress was a, a lay movement. Um, and it was something that was in the heart of a great Daniel Rudd. The next slide is one of my favorite pictures. I'm from Philadelphia. And uh, that is actually the corner of 12th and Lombard, St. Peter Claver Catholic Church, which is considered the mother church for black Catholics in Philadelphia. That was a, a photo of a group shot uh, the Congress delegates from 1892, right there in Saint, on the St. Peter Claver. And if you look right in the middle, you'll see uh, the great, venerable, soon to be Saint, Father Augustus Tolton. As we know, Father Augustus Tolton was the first recognized African-American Catholic priest and traveled throughout the country um, to make sure people um, knew they had a place in the church and offered them the, the sacrifice of Holy Mass. So uh, we thank God for his life. And um, we know one day, God is gonna raise up um, an African-American Catholic saint for our church. And of course we know um, now the Congress has developed into what we know today as our, our current reality of the National Black Catholic Congress. And um, every time we gather, we gather to pray, to celebrate, to be together, but also to work 
Uh, the Congress has always produced a, a pastoral plan, and that's going to be the basis of the Daniel Rudd Fund grant that you're going to be, uh, those are going to be applying for. It comes from uh, the Congress's work in its pastoral plan. And right there, uh, www.nbccongress.org is where you can find all the great information on the Congress. And so I really invite you to uh, stay close to all the great happenings of the great work that's being done right there in Baltimore. The Daniel Rudd Fund is a result of the Congress's efforts. Uh, it was established um, in 2013, so 11 years ago, as a result of donations from the Congress to promote ministry to Black Catholics. And the programs are extension of the Congress's work. The fund financially supports organizations that promote the pastoral plan and leadership among African-American Catholics. The goal is to assist new and existing organizations that help that need financial help to further promote the gospel in our parishes, in our schools, in our communities. It's amazing when I saw the statistic. Um, over a half a million dollars have been spent, given away to promote um, the work of the, of the Lord in over 160 organizations. That's amazing. And um, many, many people are very good financially to African-American Catholics. But what's great about this is that this is really a by us for us. This is African-American, um, an entity, an organization that is supporting, that is blessing the work in the field of African-American Catholics. And so it's, it's a great blessing for our church. And we're very grateful uh, for all the money that's been spent these past eight years and the best is yet to come. I wanna just pause for a moment and um, just remind you of the last pastoral plan we had, it actually was four years ago, and what was significant about that pastoral plan was that uh, the preamble was actually written by delegates throughout the country. There were uh, delegates from every diocese that were invited to come together and to really discern what were the issues that we wanted to develop. And, and no pastoral plan is perfect, and this one is not. But um, what it was meant to do was give some priorities, things that were important in the hearts of our people. And honestly, the pastoral plans really haven't changed a whole lot over the years. Each time we do one, it's a little bit different, but for the most part, they all go to the same issues. And all those priorities there listed there come down to basically, you gotta love the Lord your God with your heart, your mind, your soul, and you'll love your neighbor as yourself. We're called to be people of holiness, of life. We're called to get to heaven. We're called to do right by God and also do right by each other in justice. And so we're always a call to be people that are led by the spirit. That's why spirituality and the cause of the saints and developing our parishes is, is so important. But also we all know we have not just go from, go to church, we gotta go out and be church, to go from the altar to the street. And so doing justice, developing programs that help people in need are just as important as well. And so I just invite us as we begin to think about the idea you wanna present in your application, think about those two realities. Just to pause for a moment and just to acknowledge the fact that we're coming out of um, a very challenging time in our nation's history. And so if I were doing a proposal, and I'm not, I can't do one because I'm tied to this program today. Um, but if I were doing one, certainly around the, the, the topic of how do we re reconnect people, re-socialize people, bring people back together after a pandemic, in our parishes, in our schools? How do we help people um, to promote the gospel, especially those who've suffered so greatly? How do we address racism that we know is so much a part of our reality today? This divide is so great in our country. And especially, how do we address the needs of our youth and young adults? There is no parish, no diocese, no organization that's not trying to bring together ideas to help our young people. So think about that as we go through our presentation today. As I was putting together um, our next slide, our, our webinar today, I couldn't help but think about uh, the importance of dates. Uh, and so the date that's most important is tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, uh, the window opens for the Daniel Rudd Fund application. So it's, nice, it's a great night to think about your ideas. You can begin to start putting your ideas to paper 
uh, tomorrow. I can have to pay for it to the computer tomorrow for uh, everything is online uh, for our program. So it starts at eight o'clock and it closes uh, September 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is the truth. And uh, what you talk about, Willis, we talk about we have exactly that time to get it done. And so just think about that as you prepare your presentation and your application. And before we get into the actual walking through um, the actual um, platform for the application for Daniel Rudd, I just want to go back to uh, something our Black bishop said in 1984 uh, at their great pastoral letter uh, on evangelization, what we have seen and heard. And our brothers who are pictured there, um, seven have gone on to glory, and there's seven, three who are still living, Cardinal Gregory, Bishop Stive, and Bishop Ricard. But they said they talked about Black spirituality having four components. First of all, it was contemplative. It's holistic. It's joyful. And finally, it's communitarian. It's about the community. And as we develop our ideas today, let us always remember we want to work together. We want to be a family. We want to be united in our ideas and our programs to work and to bring the gospel about to, to all the world, as our Lord tells us, to go forth and teach all nations. So let's remind ourselves that we really are one family. At this time, we're going to actually walk through the um, what a Daniel Rudd Fund application looks like. And I hope I gave you some background today. And so um, this is our first time actually doing a webinar like this. So please be patient. But we're going to try to walk us through um, how this looks for those of you who are doing it for the first time. And um, for those of you who've done it before, it may be familiar, but some things have changed. So just be mindful of what has changed and what is maybe a little bit different uh, as we move forward today. I'm gonna give uh, Kim a chance to get the information logged in there for our, uh, and the first page we'll see is just that login page and you'll put your email address in and develop uh, your password. And you can see she's doing that right now. So email address for your organization and your, lock, your password, and you make your account, and you'll go right into uh, the first part of the platform. Okay, great. The first thing you want to see um, is um, a checkbox eligibility requirements. And so the first thing you wanna do before, after you pray, of course, we always do things in prayer, but uh, check and see, first of all, those three boxes there at your screen. It says funds will not be used for salaries or stipends, office supplies, or, or for applying organizations. It's program money, program money. So not part of the operating budget of your organization, but program money. Letter recommendation from an approved source must be submitted. And we'll talk about where that letter comes from in a few moments, we get to that part. But you wanna think now about the person who's gonna recommend your program idea. And then finally, uh, the project directly relates to one of the topics of the pastoral plan. And again, we already showed you those different priorities, but we'll get to that later on. But think about now, what do you want to work on? Evangelization or schools or something around youth or vocations. But those are the three things you want to check off before you begin your process altogether. The next part is actually to put in your, um, your project information, the name of your project, and be creative with it, okay? Something you want to do is focus, focus on a different project or idea in your diocese or your parish organization put your name in and the amount you're requesting. And again, obviously being mindful of the fact that um, your budget, this is as money to support your work, not to be the entire budget, but think about your budget and you have a chance to actually share your budget information in a few moments, um, but the amount you're requesting from the Daniel Ruth Fund. And also be mindful, we get a lot of requests for funds. And so obviously we try our best to be um, to be helpful and generous to everybody, but everybody can't get everything they want. But just be mindful of the fact that whatever you request may not, may or may not be able to be granted to you, but make your request known. And again, one of your, um, your program ideas must be part of the, the pastoral plan of the Congress, addressing social justice issues, catechesis and evangelization, leadership in the church, spirituality and the saints, 
supporting our Catholic identity in our, in our Catholic schools, vocations in all forms, not just religious vocations, but married, single life as well, and of course, youth and young adult ministry. One of those ideas could be something to develop your program around. Okay. Next, you want to move on to your organization um, information. So you name the organization, if it's a parish or a diocese uh, or, or other entity. When was it founded? Just give us some background. Uh, your board or committee members, who's part of your, your, um, your guiding body that supports the organization. And you can see there, it says characters, gives you an amount of how many words or uh, actual um, characters or punctuation that goes into your actual field as you fill out the, the program. Give us some history of your uh, organization, a little bit about uh, where it's been, how long it's been around. If it's a new organization, uh, just give us as much as you can about it. But some, many of our applicants have a, a great history. So tell us a story. And you have actually 5,000 characters to tell us a story right on um, the platform of where the organization has been and its impact it's had in the African-American community. What is your mission? And that is important as well. And perhaps you can just go right to your mission statement and just cut and paste that right into um, in the platform right there. And again, you have 5,000 characters for that as well. The program scope, um, to me, this is very important. If I were, again, doing a, a, a grant, I would probably start here. Okay, a lot of the stuff I just mentioned already are just factual information. This is a little bit different. This is where you really have to be creative um, about who you are and what you're doing and what's the impact and the scope um, your organization has on the Black community. Is, is it authentically Black and truly Catholic? Is it really spreading the gospel? How does it do that? And give us examples. And we give a thousand characters to do that. But give us, um, how will this make a difference in the African-American Catholic community? It may be a wonderful idea, a wonderful program, but does it really fit into the mission of the Congress? Is this the work of the Congress? And, and so think about that, pray about that. And then um, again, as I was suggesting, I would begin actually here, as you begin to look at your work, and input your work. Um, and then maybe go to your recommender, the person who would recommend your work and say, this is my idea. Can you recommend me? And also why? To have that conversation with that person who's gonna recommend your work. Um, but make sure it's really solid in terms of what you're doing. And more importantly, how does it make a difference in the life of our people? Because when all is said and done, what's most important is to make sure we're doing the work of the Lord to get us to heaven we can also do the work of God. When I was a pastor, I'm not a pastor any longer. I often ask myself that question, is the work I'm doing, is my ministry going to help someone get the glory, get to heaven? It's going to call someone the holiness of life by doing justice, by living righteously. And so that's something to think about as you build out your program um, for Daniel Rudd. Is your, is your program scope national or local? And that's important. Some of our great programs really are, have a, a wide reach and it's something that really invites the entire country to come together, but some are more local. But whatever it may be, give us an idea of how far of a reach of a scope uh, the program you're, uh, you're um, applying for, a, a grant for, would, um, would have a national or local scope. And then the budget, this is important as well. Think about, again, I said before, the amount you're requesting. What we do is, um, we want to make sure you actually um, have your budget on file. We actually want to show you how to do that in a second, upload your file. But, but again, think about what we will fund and what we won't fund. Again, it's program money. It's also seed money. Uh, it's important. It says that the, the sources, the Daniel Rudd Fund provides money allotted to assist organizations to initiate a project. It's a seed money. And we only do it for three times. It's a three-time grant. And so the reason is because we want to obviously share the many blessings that people have in our nation. Our nation's big. We have a lot of people who need uh, requests, funds, and want support. But think about your idea. Put your program budget there, and we'll do our best to discern and see if it fits into the mission of the Daniel Rudd Fund. And then when it comes down to your budget, we want to see, make sure we're not the only source of income. 
So maybe you're getting income from another source. Maybe you're getting income from um, the parish or another donor, but we wanna make sure that it's sustainable. That it's not just dependent upon the Congress, or the Daniel Webb Fund itself. So that's why we asked you to submit a budget. And uh, Ms. Kim, is it possible for us to upload a, a file? Yes, I'm gonna do that right now. Great, thank you. Uh-huh. Just go to your computer, leave your desktop on your files and just select a budget and then put it right there and upload into the Daniel Rudd Fund. Okay, so that's already attached. You can see the title of the um, Excel spreadsheet under, right underneath upload a file. We're not seeing that right now, Ms. Kim. Okay, if you look at um, the button upload a file. Okay. Underneath that is the title of the document I just uploaded. So okay. that's how they know that it's it's actually attached. Perfect there. So you see there on the screen, uh, upload a file. Underneath that's a sample budget, sample program budget. And that, you know it's already there. So let's go right to your, 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 your document, your, your desktop and just go right there, upload, and then you're ready to go. Yeah, um, very, very easy. Great. So just like that. Perfect. And this is this is just a sample. You can upload um, a Word document as well. It doesn't have to be a spreadsheet. It can be a Word sheet, a Word document or an Excel sheet. Is it possible to enlarge the words, uh, Kim? Someone asked for enlarging. On on which the spreadsheet or here? The general program itself. Yep. The screen. Okay. Let me go here. Is that better? Uh, sure. Yep, that's better. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so again, and, and I find to myself, that's why we, I really encourage you to start early. Uh, when I was administrator, some folks would start a week before. Um, you you want to start this thinking about this. Well, we're doing this webinar the day before the window opens, but I would start this as soon as possible. And if you need tech help, we know as many people can support you with that. Um, I know myself as a, as a professor in college, I often need people to help me with things. And so uh, reach out and ask someone to assist you with that. And the Congress office can be assistance of that as well. Let us know. But I, I would try to upload and, and get your work done as soon as possible. And finally, the, the letter of recommendation, um, we, we've, um, anything we do in the church is a work in progress. Acts of the Apostles, the church has always been um, progressing and trying to improve itself. And so um, we've made some changes to try to make this simpler. Why a little recommendation? We do this because it's important to have someone sponsor you or recommend you um, in anything. Think about the sacraments. When someone um, is being confirmed, you may say, would you be my sponsor? For, for, for confirmation. So we ask uh, someone to be your sponsor, your uh, recommender, to recommend your work you're doing. Um, so uh, we, 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 we broke it down in different categories. We, we made the categories, I think, simpler. And we made the categories as well um, a little bit broader. So simpler, but also broader. We know leadership in the church is not just the bishop or the pastor. Leadership is, is a wide net of that. And so you can request a letter on official stationery, meaning the stationery of the person who is writing the letter. It can't just be a, you know, um, uh, an email that you wrote. No, it should be on the stationery of the person, uh, the official stationery of the person who's recommending your organization. From a diocesan or auxiliary bishop of your diocese, um, the diocesan chancellor, the vicar general, or episcopal vicar for clergy the director of a Dawson office of Black Catholics of Multicultural Ministries. And many of them are in the audience today. In fact, Ms. Perlet Springer is a, a director of an office. I believe Ms. Valley has sent out a, um, an email to those, uh, those who have those ministries to remind them, to uh, just advise them that it may be people requesting letters. A, a director of a national Catholic organization. We have many of them part of the umbrella of the National Black Catholic Congress, like the clergy caucus or others, they would be considered a national Black Catholic organization. A president of a college or university. Many people have ideas that are wrapped around um, education efforts. So think about a president of a university or a college. Religious superior or provincial superior, a head of a national or local chapter of religious community. And finally, a superintendent of Catholic schools within your diocese. So we try to think of as many possible uh, entities where the letter could be um, could come from. 
We try to be as broad as possible in terms of leadership in our church. And to, again, to think about who you want to um, discern that base that aligns well with your program idea. So we're doing something around education that's really local in your parish school, maybe. You want to think about me, I'm going to ask my diocesan superintendent of schools to recommend me, or maybe one of our black bishops to recommend me for that. But whatever it may be, you want to reach out to that person as soon as possible. Because again, our window goes from July 1, September 1. And we notice a, a time that many people uh, have retreats and vacations. So it may be a good idea to start reaching out as soon as possible to someone to ask for a letter of recommendation. The letter must be scanned and saved to your computer as a PDF file and then upload it in that same way you did the budget, upload file, and then right there, upload, you'll see the letter there. And then select from your browser, click open, and your letter will be right there. Can we show them how to do that? Yes. Let me go here. Okay. So I'm selecting the PDF file. Perfect. Okay. And then just click open. Open at the bottom and there you are. Yeah, right it's there. right there. Okay. So again, we try to make this simpler for people. And I hope um, this is... Um, Helping you, again, it's no paper involved, no need to scan anything, it's not no need to fax anything, uh, but it's all there. It's all, uh, and it's meant to, um, to save paper, but also save time for our reviewers. But more importantly, it, it, it's, it's a way to also, to help you, even if you don't get a grant. I, I always said to people when I was able to, to help with this project, it, it's a good process to go through because I'm quite sure you're, you're, you're doing many applications for grants. And so this is one example of how to navigate through a system that I think is pretty simple. It may be helpful to you to learn how to do this as you move forward to get other grants to promote the gospel in your local organization. And um, you can see that if you need any help or assistance, you can contact uh, the Daniel Rudd Fund Administrator, 2021drf at gmail.com. And I certainly, I also said I will certainly be able to answer any questions that anyone wants to ask me. If I could be of help to anyone, about ideas that may be helpful as well. But as far as getting your program together, you wanna to do that. And again, I wanna say it again, do it early because uh, coming in at August 28th and asking for help, it may be a little difficult, but get it done early and, and get your idea out there so you can really um, support your work. And what's great about this process, even if you don't get a grant from Daniel Rudd, it gets you thinking about other ways to, to get grants. And I always encourage people to have as many opportunities as possible to get grants, apply as for as many as you can. And so be able to uh, do the work, you can get your work accomplished and promote the gospel in your local area. All right, great. I hope that was helpful for people. I see a number of questions in the chat and some are trying to answer some questions. I got one right here, it already sent to me. Um, and, and someone already asked a question. I have this uh, to read to you. It says, um, if an organization requests funding for a program, how many times can they receive a grant? Well, again, uh, we, we offer a, a grant uh, three times to an organization. No matter what the program idea is, it's three times to the organization. So um, and again, the reason is because uh, we have so many people who are requesting funds, we want to um, be, be family and be generous to as many people as possible. So um, you can, we can apply as many times as you want to, uh, but as far as grants, we, we, we offer the grants of three times to organization. Okay. That's one question that came in. Um, other questions uh, come in so far? Okay, um, Father Thorne, we do have a question. A, it's a general question. It says, do I need to create an account to be able to log on? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, the, the log on with your um, your uh, your e email address and your um, your password, and it goes right into your account. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the next one um, is: if a director of an office for Black Catholics decided to submit an application, do we need a sponsor, or can we be our own sponsor? The answer is no. Uh, you cannot recommend your own. Uh, think about, again, sacraments. You can't be your own sponsor for a sacrament. So if you are director of an office, it might be best to get your bishop or your vicar general or university president of your local college to support your uh, idea, to recommend your idea. But you cannot recommend your own idea. Okay. Good question. Yep. Um, the next question is, Father, is there an average grant? 
There really isn't. I mean, we, we get requests that are very high, six digits in some, I've seen in the past, and we get some that are more, um, more reasonable, more lower amounts, but it just depends on what the idea is. And so the reviewers, uh, we have reviewers who are not part of the staff who review the grants and will score them with a rubric and um, they'll be able to give us uh, an idea of how, how, their, how the request uh, scores based upon the rubric, but it depends on what your idea is. Obviously, if it's a, um, if a national idea, it would, I would imagine it would be a larger amount for a national idea as opposed to a local one. But that's why really thinking this through, thinking through your, your and also back to my point about, I mentioned about impact, impact. Is your impact gonna be, what is it like? I think that's something that is tremendously important uh, what type of impact and those examples of impact your program idea will have on the church to spread the gospel among African-American Catholics? How does it affect evangelization, which is the mission of the Congress? That's very, so aligning your, the mission of the Congress, uh, the pastoral plan with our idea is very important. So I would do a little bit of research and making sure that what you're promoting is aligned with the Congress's mission. Again, it may be a great idea and a very wonderful program, but is it something that really is for program money? And is it really going to advance the mission of African-American Catholics? That is the mission of the Congress. Okay, the next question is, um, are past approved grants public information that can be shared? Shared, I'm not sure it means shared uh, with the general public or shared with, with whom, I'm not sure. If, First, to clarify that question. Okay, let uh, we me we do uh, not shared do shared with the um, applicants, I believe. Oh, uh, shared. Okay, this. Okay, he says shared to us. Would that be with other applicants or with just the grantee? Shared with new applicants. Okay, so would past approved grants be made public and shared with new applicants? I would say no to that. I would say we're not going to, we don't, once the, the grant goes in, we, obviously we keep people's information. That information is very sensitive. And so whether it's a phone number or email address or board members. So uh, outside of the, the staff, and I imagine the executive committee of the Congress, um, uh, it would not be something we'd share with other people. And so when it, once it's submitted, and we also, uh, the timeline of, 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 of some kind of a um, result of your work would be um, uh, the, the beginning of the week of, of November 15th. So about, you know, uh, November 15th would be the time we begin to give you uh, an answer of yes or no of getting a grant. So give us about two months uh, to discern all the different applicants to, to come in and be able to uh, let you know if you got a grant or not. So by November 15th, before Thanksgiving, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into scoring um, each applicant, making a real discernment of who gets money, who doesn't get money. Um, but in terms of uh, sharing people's information, uh, we, we don't do that. Okay. Um, I have a question right here. I belong to a consortium of four schools. Two are African-American and the other two are Hispanic white. Would I just focus on the two African-American schools or be inclusive of the other two schools? It would depend on um, what you're requesting. You know, uh, obviously if I were advising the person who's making that request, I would um, develop my idea based around the African-American uh, work of the consortium, uh, but it depends on what your request is. Um, so obviously if you're asking, for example, African-American Bibles, you know, all the children would receive a Bible, no matter what their race is. But obviously the request is to promote uh, the African-American uh, youth Bible, um, to get it out to as many people as possible. So I would say that I would, I would advise that person to um, develop their program's impact around the African-American community. Okay. Um, the next question is, if the project is under a subcommittee with one of the religious orders, can the letter come from that appointed chair or the religious order, or must it come from the provincial? Again, I would, as far as letters, I would recommend the letter get as far away from the exact impact itself. So for example, um, as I said before about the, the, the Office of Black Catholic Ministry, I would try to get that away from the exact person directing the, the work. So I would suggest that come from the religious superior or the provincial. 
or somebody else. Again, we gave many examples of persons who could be um, recommenders for the, your applicants. So think about who's the best person to recommend your work, but I wouldn't have, again, the whole idea is, is for transparency and for a, a real sense of prudence with that. So we wanna make sure we um, uh, get someone who really, you know, back to that conversation you had with that person who um, looking at your idea and to say, Does this, what do you think about this? So I would try to get that as um, to someone who really would have a, a different set of eyes to look at your work. Okay. Okay, the next question is if our organization members have paid all expenses out of the members' pockets, can we still apply? We are recognized as a ministry, but not funded by the parish or diocese. I would have to look at the, the program idea. Again, I'm, I'm not a reviewer. I'm not a, um, I'm not, you know, so again, I would have to look at, I would have to see a little bit more. That might be more of a personal question. We would have to reach out a particular question to the Congress office, or if I could answer that question offline to that person, whoever's asking to get a little bit more idea of what you're talking about. Um, in terms of paid out of pocket. But uh, I would suggest, again, this is why we're having this today to give people a chance to think a little bit before they actually go through the work of doing an application. Um, but I would need a little bit more information before I would say yes or no to that. Okay. Um, when putting the program together, can it also include the printing for material for the day as well as name badges, et cetera? I believe so. I would look back and see uh, the actual what that I know we do not do salaries, uh, but we do uh, support um, other um, expenses for a program. I believe that would be allowed to be part of your budget. Yes. Okay. Um, what is the minimum and maximum amount to request? We don't give uh, those numbers. We really invite people to, to think about what is best for you. So really, we, we don't, uh, we're not that um, specific uh, with the, so you could put in $100, you could put in $1,000, $100,000, whatever you think is, as, is realistic to your budget. That's why looking at your budget and seeing what the programs that you think are aligned with the Congress and aligned with impact on the Black community that we can support. Um, but that's really up to you as far as the, the amount. Okay. Will grantees be able to view the scoring rubric before submitting their proposal? I believe that's the answer is no to that. The, the, the rubric um, is being worked on, it's being finalized with the reviewers. But as far as the rubric, so basically it's, uh, we go through the actual, each part of the, um, of the application, there's points for each, each part of that. So for example, making sure you have everything. And really you can't also with the, what's good about this platform that the Congress has developed is, you really can't advance to the next um, the next part of the platform unless all the fields are correctly filled out. If it says asterisk and says field required, you've got to make sure that is actually filled out before you can advance. So once you everything you press submit, um, the reviewers will look at and score it based upon uh, what they see. Again, going back to impact and scope, that's a very important part of the the, the, the rubric. So I would really lean in on that a little bit. Okay. Um, can a church and school apply for a grant? Yes, uh, they can. Uh, it, it, again, depends on the kind of grant it is, um, what it's about. But again, it, it, organizations can only um, apply, receive money three times. Uh, but it depends on the program that the school and church are sponsoring. If it's aligned together, we have different kinds of models of schools today but depends on what kind of program it is, but it, possibly that could be certainly um, a valid application. Okay. Um, and it looks like this may be a final question. Oh, okay. um, if the project is open to all African-Americans, does everyone have to be Catholic that is participating, even if it will be held at a parish? No, because um, that could be a very good thing for evangelization. If you're doing, for example, a lot of our schools, many of our schools um, are Catholic schools, uh, but most of the children, or many of the children are not Catholic. But if it's a way to promote the gospel, that could be a very, it's actually a nice way to end, a very strong proposal for impact to try to spread the gospel among um, the African-American community. So that could be a very strong proposal to um, 
can have impact on our people. So I would say that could be a very um, a good application to put in. Okay. Um, there is one more question. Okay, sure. Is an application worksheet template available to prep for the online app? There is not. There's actually, there's a tutorial that's going to be available. And then, of course, this webinar is being recorded. It'll be available to, uh, to view again. So the tutorial will have that available to you if you want to actually help you walk through the process. You have really three ways to get support. The first is a tutorial. The second would be this recording that may be helpful to you to watch again and maybe have people that are part of your board or your committee to watch it with you. And then um, third, ask questions. Uh, again, Ms. Perlette is uh, with us today. She gave a testimony about how she um, had to give her more work, but to uh, but reach out to people you may know that have received grants and ask them uh, their thoughts on the process or how they did it. Um, reach out to the Congress office, to the Daniel Rudd Fund administrator uh, address, website address. And again, uh, I'll make my email address available. If you want to reach out to me for questions or comments, um, please do so. Someone already added, added a question about um, my virtual background is uh, St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church in, in North Philadelphia, uh, Kingdom of North Philadelphia, where I'm originally from and I was pastor for 10 years. And uh, we have uh, these banners here behind me of our six holy people in the, the back of our church. And uh, as people leave our church, we always reminded people um, that uh, go out and be and do justice, go out and, and be church and uh, act justly, love tenderly, walk humbly with our God. And so what a great example um, to remind people of these holy women and men who are on the road to sainthood in our church and to, to live like them. And so um, the more we can uh, work and imitate those holy people and to live our lives like them and to go out and promote the gospel, um, the more we're gonna do the work that God wants us to do and uh, the National Black Catholic Congress, which was started by Daniel Rudd so many years ago, over 100 some years ago, is still fresh today. Um, we still, Daniel Rudd began this work um, as a reminder of the great gift of our church and the gift of what we're called to be as Black Catholics. And so the more we can use his name and this fund in his honor to do the work uh, that God has called us to do, the more God smiles upon each of us today. As our children said at the beginning of a saying so beautifully and so innocently, uh, somebody is calling our name and, and our Lord is calling us each day um, to do right, to do justice and to be the very best we can be. Uh, we're very grateful for your time today. We know you have other things on your plate, um, but thank you for joining us today uh, for this webinar. I hope it was helpful to you. Please uh, complete the um, evaluation form. Let us know what you think about it. and. Um, Again, think about your proposal and I wish you all the best with, with it. I love this picture. Uh, I'm, I'm a visual learner myself. And uh, I, just, I just Googled children praying and this image came up and actually the, the three children praying uh, before he went into their public school. But you know, a lot of times uh, our, children, our children can't pray in our public schools. And so they're just asking God to be with them on their journey. And so that's my prayer for you today. How blessed are we to be able to, uh, to speak a word and pray a word and ask God to bless us each and every day of our lives. And so those children remind me that uh, we have an on-time God and a God who can do anything but fail and a God who is with us at all times. And so in that, in that mindset, let us pray now and ask God to bless the rest of our day and bless the work of the Daniel Rudd Fund. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us put our work under the great intercession of Mary Mary, who is the mother of Jesus and our mother. Mary, who said yes to God's plan, who trusted the process of God. Mary, who, um, who held Jesus in her arms. The beautiful song, Gift of Fine and Sweet, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. That Mary, who trusted and believed at the cross, that it wasn't over, it was just getting started. And the Mary, who was with the Church of Pentecost, as they were told to go out and preach the gospel. Loving, uh, loving God, bless us today in, in the work that we do on behalf of the National Black Catholic Congress. And may Mary, um, our mother, intercede for us to our son Jesus. And we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and be blessed. Amen.